Oh, we got a fun one today. This is one of the biggest questions I get, and in this video I'm going to address this in detail in terms of what will actually happen. Caleb, okay, the West is collapsing, but what does that mean? What will actually happen? When will it happen? Let's talk about that in great detail. I am Caleb Jones, and this is Alpha Male 2.0, freedom-focused lifestyle design for men. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. We do five videos a week here on how to make both your woman life and your business life more free because you need both. We are also doing a online course drawing giveaway right now. This is my online course on how you can design your own location independent business. Kind of important for Western Collapse, don't you think? That course retails for around $1,400, but you might be able to get it for free. All you need to do is be a subscriber here at YouTube, like this video, and leave a comment, and I will announce the winner of the drawing every two weeks at the YouTube community feed here at this YouTube channel. Okay, Western Collapse. Now, first, before we get into specifics of what may or may not happen, we need to cover the basics first. So, number one top of the list, you do not want to engage in disaster porn or doomsday porn. Too many of you are doing this. Too many of you like doing this. Too many of you are psychos. When coronavirus hit, you guys are like, oh my God, the world's going to, ah, we're all, no. We're not going to experience some kind of Mad Max, end of the world, nuclear war. You'll be crowded in your home, gather up your bullets and your women and your water because it'll be a wasteland and oh my God, no. Under none of these scenarios do I see that happening. I do not see some kind of nuclear war. I do not see some kind of Mad Max end of the world scenario. I do not see some kind of thing where we will be scavenging in caves. No, that's not going to happen, or at least that is in the 2% rule. And if you don't know what the 2% rule is, Google Black Dragon blog 2% rule, and you can read some articles on it. That basically means if something has less than a 2% chance of happening, don't fucking worry about it. It's not gonna happen because the odds are less than 2%. So. That's not gonna happen. So you don't wanna be a maniac about this. It's also not gonna happen tomorrow. The West is not gonna collapse tomorrow morning. I'll talk about maybe possible timeframes in a few minutes, but we're not gonna have a collapse this year. I love these guys say, oh my God, by November of this year, and the year depends, 2018, 2070, 2020, oh, we're all fucked. No, no, it's not gonna happen anytime soon, at least not that soon. It will happen in our lifetimes. That's why I'm talking about it. That's why you need to be aware of it. And that moves to the second piece to this. That is, you don't want to be a disaster idiot. You don't want to be in disaster porn, but you also don't want to be stupid, like a lot of left-wingers are. Right-wingers, former right-wingers, there is no right in America anymore. Right-wingers, former right-wingers tend to go on the disaster side. Left-wingers tend to go on, what's wrong? Everything will be fine. America will be fine. We can spend all the money we want. We owe it to ourselves. It's perfectly fine. We can raise taxes and print money. And what, what are you guys worried about? It's fine. I think America will do just fine. I have had numerous guys, usually guys from outside America who want to move to America will say on my blogs, Caleb, I think America will do just fine. I don't think America will collapse. And I will always say, great. Please show me your economic data that you've looked at that suggests that America will do just fine over the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, please. I'd love to take a look at it. It. And guess what they do? They run away. Okay, so you don't want to be a disaster idiot, and you also don't want to be naively stupid and say, everything will be fine, it'll be fine, don't worry about it. The West will collapse in our lifetimes. The United States will collapse in our lifetimes. Canada will collapse in our lifetimes. Europe is collapsing right now. I mean, America is collapsing right now too, but Europe will collapse before America does. And that's kind of the order. Europe will probably go first, America will probably go second, Canada will probably go third, probably. There's no way to know for sure, and let me say that very clearly in this video before I get into specifics. There is no way for sure to predict the future. Anyone who says or even implies that they can exactly predict what will happen and when will happen are either psychos or they're trying to sell you something. I'm gonna give you five possible scenarios, and I am confident that one of those five will occur in our lifetimes. I don't know which of the five will occur. I don't know because I can't tell the future. I also don't know when they'll happen because I can't tell the future. So anytime you see anyone online saying this is exactly how America will collapse, he is full of shit. Anytime you see anyone online saying this is exactly when the West will collapse or when America will collapse or when Germany or England or whatever, Canada, when they will collapse, they give you like specific dates or time frames. They're full of shit, they don't know. How the fuck would they know? If they had the ability to accurately predict the future that way, they'd already be multi-billionaires. 
If I knew exactly when this was gonna happen and how it was gonna happen, I would already be a billionaire. You can't predict the future. But what we can do is we can make educated guesses about the future. So my educated guess, and I'm pretty sure I'm right, I could be wrong. Maybe America will never collapse. In the next 100 years, it'll be great. Odds are very low. America is going to collapse. I don't know when, and I don't know exactly how, but I can give you one of the five scenarios under which that life, I'm pretty sure, will occur. And you just want to prepare for all five of them. That way you're covered. That's what I've done. I have covered myself in terms of all five of these possible scenarios that I'm going to cover in a second. Make sense? So, really quick, don't be a disaster porn psycho. Don't be a moron and say nothing bad will happen. And remember, you can't accurately predict the future. I want to make sure all that's covered before we get into this. Cool? Cool. Okay. I'm going to cover these in no particular order. By the way, I have already written an article about this, about these five scenarios. And I wrote it about two, three, four years ago. And a lot of you requested that you wanted a video version of this, which is fine. It's kind of what I'm doing here. Plus, I can update this a little bit. Okay? Okay. Again, I'm going to draw these out in no particular order. I am going to number them, but they're not listed in any order of likelihood or order of severity or any of that stuff. They're just random order. Cool? Okay. Number one is this one is the least bad scenario in terms of collapse. This, of all the five scenarios that are really bad, this one is still bad, but it's the least bad. And so I'm kind of hoping that this will be what happens when America, Europe, Canada, the West collapses. I'm hoping this will be it. I have a sad feeling this will probably not be it. I think this is not the most likely option, but it is a possibility, and that is secession. Secession. That is when smaller states or provinces or areas of larger countries or larger conglomerates like the EU and things like that start breaking away from their host parasite relationships and form their own little countries. Several examples would be in this possible scenario, and this may not happen, but several examples in the United States would be the less left-wing states may break away from the United States as the United States continues its decline. I'm not going to say right-wing states. There are no right-wing states in the United States. There are no libertarian states in the United States. No, I'm very sorry. New Hampshire is not a libertarian state. I'm sorry it's not. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's less left-wing than California, of course. But it's not right-wing or for... <laughs> no. So we're talking here about states like New Hampshire, states like perhaps Texas, states like Alaska. These states, as America continues to decline, may... I don't think they will. I don't think they have the balls, frankly. But they may, it's possible, break away and form their own countries. I love it when Texas threatens to do that because Texas actually was its own country a long, long, long time ago. I don't think this is very likely because, again, I don't think the states have the balls to do this, have the balls to actually take on the U.S. military, have the balls to detach themselves from the teat of the federal government that gives a lot of bailout money and welfare money and support to the states, things like that. That is why you will literally never see any hard left-wing states secede from the United States. There was some talk when back when Trump was elected, there was a bunch of talk about California seceding from... Morons. No, California will never secede from the United States. It needs the federal government too badly. It will never happen. But the more less left-wing states could. Outside of the United States, places like Canada, you might see places like Quebec secede from Canada. In Europe, you might see places like Catalonia secede from Spain, places like that. A few years ago, uh, Scotland famously threatened <laughs> to leave the UK, and they were full of shit. They didn't leave. I'm like, fuck you. We like you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I got very excited about Scotland leaving, but uh, no, when it, when it came down to it, they decided not to leave because, again, it's very hard to secede from your bigger country when you're getting a bunch of free money from that country. So, again, I don't think this is very likely, but it is possible. What we have seen with the former Soviet countries when the Soviet Union collapsed and it broke into a bunch of 15, 17 different countries, you have noticed some of these countries do really well and do the right things. Georgia is doing some great stuff. Estonia is doing some great stuff. And some of these countries are terrible, like Belarus. So if the United States, Canada, Europe broke up into a bunch of little tiny countries, some of these countries would suck and be terrible and be stupid. Some of these countries would collapse along with the rest of the West. But some of these countries might do okay, might do well. And I have actually said on the record that if you had a less left-wing state break away from the federal government of the United States and form its own country, 
and it adopted more libertarianish models, I would strongly consider moving back there. It wouldn't be the United States, it would be this breakaway state. Let's say if Texas did that, for example. Again, I don't think this is gonna happen, but of all these scenarios, secession is the least bad one. It's the one I'm hoping for, but I'm not betting on it. I don't think that's the most likely option. I'll cover the most likely option in a second. The next possible scenario of Western collapse, specifically, and this specifically applies to the United States, but you could also, in a way, apply it to some other Western countries like Canada, Europe, things like that. And yes, I know Europe is not a country. Don't nitpick. That is a slow decline. Decline. Did I spell that right? Woo, I did. Yeah. Slow decline into irrelevance. What does that mean? Well, Portugal, used to run the entire world 400 years ago. People don't know that. Portugal ran the fucking world. Portugal was the big giant naval superpower that everybody in the world was scared of. Portugal, now, Portugal collapsed. Now, does that mean Portugal is gone? Is there no Portugal anymore? No, there's a Portugal. There is a Portugal, right? It's this little teeny tiny country, it's about that big. It's this little fly speck on Europe's ass. And it's this little teeny tiny country, this silly little country that is totally in debt. The IMF has to keep bailing them out because they're weirdos over there. It's this big, they have no money, they're in debt, and no one gives a shit about it anymore. Well, that could be in 50 years, 70 years, 100 years or less, that could be the United States. The United States could end up being this little teeny tiny little country the size of Connecticut or whatever, surrounded by a bunch of Mexican or Chinese countries. Many of them would be bankrupt too. And, uh, you know, matter of fact, if you've read the book uh, Snow Crash, the cyberpunk novel Snow Crash, that talks about this possible future where the United States is this little teeny tiny bullshit country and everyone kind of laughs at it. And that could happen in the United States. It could be, that's kind of what happened to the UK. The, you know, the UK ran the world, right, just kind of recently, 200 years ago in terms of history. They don't anymore, do they? So many years from now, several decades from now, you could have these old Americans sitting around in a bar somewhere, kind of like these really old guys in the UK, saying, oh yeah, we used to run the world back in the 1950s and 60s, we ran the world, God damn, America lives forever. You know, you could have that. In other words, it wouldn't be a sudden collapse. It could just be a slow, 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 constant decline that never comes back up again, but it doesn't just collapse, it just slowly goes to shit. That could happen. Don't think that'll happen, but it could. That is entirely possible. Matter of fact, this is actually more possible than secession. Could happen. It could just be a slow, slow decline. I don't think this is gonna happen with Europe. I think Europe's collapse is gonna be much sharper, um, but it could happen with the United States and it certainly could happen with Canada. Could happen, maybe, we'll see. The advantage of this is that you have time to get the fuck out. <laughs> if this occurs, and I don't think it will, but it could. If this occurs, you've got more time to get your Alpha 2.0 no business in order, move out of the country for those of you willing to do that, things like that. That's the advantage, the non-bad thing about this, slow decline. Cool? All right. The third possibility, the one that I think is most possible, and this one is kind of probably the scariest one. It's kind of sad that the scariest option on here is one that is probably the most likely, and that is a currency crisis. Now that is when crisis. That is when there is a massive problem with the US dollar and concurrently possibly with the Canadian dollar and or with the Euro where the value of the dollar either skyrockets which would be a deflationary collapse or collapses which would be a hyperinflationary collapse. Now that's the confusing part of this. You could have one of two scenarios here. You could have a deflation, deflationary collapse or you could have an inflationary collapse. Inflation. So let's say we have, an, it could be one or the other. Uh, I am betting on this one. I think it's most likely gonna be that, but I could be wrong. It could be a deflationary collapse. And there are some guys who make some good points who think, no, 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 America's gonna collapse, but it's gonna be de deflationary, not inflationary. So what happens in a hyperinflation currency collapse? What would happen? Well, here's a, one example of a scenario. China and various other countries of the world stop using US dollars. Now that's not something China can do anytime soon. China's kind of locked into the US dollar, at least for the time being, but they are doing a lot of things to make sure they're getting out of the dollar. China, Russia, India, the other quasi superpowers, what they do is they get out of the US dollar, which means trillions of US dollars come flooding back into the United States 
which means the value of the dollar collapses, which means prices skyrocket. So suddenly you go to the store and a loaf of bread is $300. And all the money you have in your 401k, your savings, your investments, all that is now completely fucking worthless, unless you own gold or silver, especially gold, okay? Your real estate's worthless, all your assets are worthless, everything sucks, it's really, 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 really bad. That's a hyperinflation scenario, which may happen, may not happen, we don't know, but that is certainly a possibility with all the money that America is printing. And I know you're gonna get some guys in these comments who are left-wing guys or Keynesian guys or MMT guys who say, don't worry, we can print all the money we want because we owe it to ourselves. We can borrow all the money they want because the rest of the world has to use the US dollar because of the petrodollar. Okay, real quick on that. If you ever see someone say that, ask that person this. Is it a good idea to have the US federal government print up $100,000 every January 1st and just hand it to every American over the age of 18 tax-free and do that every year. If it doesn't matter if we print all this money, if it doesn't matter because we owe it to ourselves, why not do that? Please answer that question. And then listen to him say the reason why he's wrong. <laughs> anyway, so that's one. Deflation. Deflationary is the opposite of inflation. That is when the value of your currency skyrockets instead of goes to zero. In that type of scenario, there is some kind of huge crisis somewhere in the world. Uh, maybe a huge war in Europe, maybe a limited nuclear exchange between India and Pakistan, not a nuclear war, not a world war, a limited exchange, some kind of horrible thing, a meteor hits fucking Russia, who knows? which means the entire world floods to the US dollar. Another possibility for a deflationary collapse is that the stock market bubble finally bursts and the US federal government, the IMF, all these other agencies and, and you know, elite controlled organizations that bail out the stock market, they run out of ways to fudge with the numbers and the stock market literally does collapse. So the Dow goes from, well, I don't know, 25,000 down to 5,000 or even less. So stocks collapse, commodities collapse. The banks call in every loan in the universe and no one can pay them. Reproducing a scenario somewhat like the savings and loan crisis of the 1980s, only a hundred times worse. Everyone loses their homes. Everyone who owns real estate loses that. Everyone who owns rental real estate loses that. What remains of the manufacturing sector in the Western world completely collapses and is fucking gone for good. Very, 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 very bad. And, uh, you know, one of those things. So, currency crisis, that's the fourth item. Okay, that's what I think is the most likely of these five scenarios, but who knows? Number four, and I'm running out of room to write because I wrote sideways, so I'm gonna write this. That is totalitarianism. Totalitarianism. Did I spell that right? Pretend I spelled that right, I'm pretty sure I did. I think I went to fifth grade, I'm not sure. Totalitarianism. This is a scenario under which you have a very competent but very evil Hitler-type character who assumes major power in Canada, in the United States, or maybe in Europe, and for some strange reason, the military decides to do whatever this guy wants, which is why it's pretty unlikely in my view, but it's possible and everything goes to hard right totalitarianism. So they shut down the borders, they cut off all travel, they expel all immigrants. You have virtually no civil liberties anymore, martial law all over the place. It's really, really, really bad. Unless you're one of the elites, then you're probably okay. Unless you're one of the elites that the new emperor ruler doesn't like, then you get shot or what have you. Very unlikely, I put it up here just to be complete. I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, and the best way to prevent against that is just don't live in the West. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I don't think that's gonna happen, but it is within the realm of possibility. It's just the least likely of these five scenarios, in my opinion. Okay, last one is war. War, war, what is it good for? Can you see that? Yeah, war. War. This could be one of many different things. Um, let me tell you first what I don't think is gonna happen, and I get a lot of questions about this. There will not be a civil war in the United States. I've already written articles about this. Let me be very clear about this. People don't understand the difference between civil war and civil unrest. 
In the United States, which is now in a state of collapse, you're gonna have, as I've talked about in prior videos, a regular constant state of civil unrest in cities all over the United States and also in Europe. That is now the norm in the collapsing Western world in which we live. It will happen to Canada eventually, but that'll be last. So yes, you're gonna have massive civil unrest where a bunch of people are gonna go out and smash buildings and the cops are gonna overdo it and shoot people and it's gonna be a fucking mess on both sides. Yes, that is going to happen and that's going to get worse, particularly here in the United States. Absolutely. That is not civil war. Civil war means there are two armies armed with guns who are organized and who go to war against each other. That is not gonna happen in the United States. The typical American is too fat too low testosterone, too beta, too drug addicted, and too terrified of his girlfriend or wife to actually pick up a gun and go shoot somebody. Are you fucking kidding? Have you ever actually pulled out a gun in front of just a normal, typical American guy? They turn into girls and go, oh, it's got scary. That, that guy, you think that fucking guy's gonna pick up a gun and go shoot people? No, no, they're not. There will not be a civil war in the US. There will not. I can't speak for Europe. Europe's a little different, but even Europe, I doubt it. War is not civil war talk about in a second. But don't worry about civil war in the US, just lots and lots of civil unrest. That's what will not happen. Now what could happen, and if it were to happen anywhere, I predict this would happen more in Europe, more so than the United States, but it's possible. Um, the United States is one scenario where this could occur. You could have a country in Europe that kind of goes crazy and starts going to war against other countries. You could have Putin who just finally snaps and loses it and starts invading countries. That could happen. You could have the United States overreact to some kind of huge problem somewhere in the world, perhaps Iran, and just go hog wild and cause all kinds of problems. You could also have war outside of the Western world. For example, um, tensions are rising between India and China. Tensions are always bad between India and Pakistan. Um, a lot of possible powder keg points. I do not think, uh, in addition to not having a civil war, you will not have another nuclear world war. So I do not predict this. You're not gonna have a world war. Too many of the elites all over the world would lose too much money. And they all know each other, all the elites in all these different countries. They know each other, they're buddies, or at least allies. So no, you're not gonna, the world has grown too small for an actual nuclear war or a world, not nuclear exchange, that's different, but a nuclear war, a world war, it's not gonna happen. But what is gonna happen are proxy wars, which is what the United States is doing right now. The United States is in eight different wars. Thanks, Donald Trump. It's in eight different wars right now, little tiny wars. The elites love those. They make a lot of money on little tiny wars. They don't make money on big wars. But these could expand into something that is more catastrophic. Again, I don't think that's super, super likely. Um, not quite as unlikely as totalitarianism, but it is possible. I put this on the list to be complete. So these are the five possibilities. I think the most likely one is currency crisis, probably inflationary. The second most likely is probably slow decline. Third most likely is probably secession. Uh, fourth most likely is war, but that's much less likely. And the last one is totalitarianism, in my opinion. And I could be wrong because no one can tell the future. So it is your job as the alpha male 2.0 to prepare for any one of these scenarios. I am prepared for any one of these things. Matter of fact, I would profit from a number of these things. <laughs> I would certainly profit from this. Matter of fact, I already am. So not only can you prepare for these things, you can also ask yourself, how do I profit from these things if they were to occur? I've said this a million times. The United States is going to collapse in our lifetime and you can't stop it. You can vote for whoever you want. You can scream your head off about SJWs all you want. The United States is going to collapse and you can't stop it. Meaning, if you're smart, you can profit from it. You can actually benefit from it. I know that feels weird. I am a proud American in terms of what America used to be. I love people in the United States. I don't like its government at all, but I like people there. I, the culture is okay. Uh, it was better in the 80s, but it's still pretty cool. So it's not, I don't hate America. I'm not one of these America haters, but I acknowledge that America is going down. Europe is going down even faster. Canada is much better off than both Europe and the United States. Your banks are a lot better and so on, but you guys are going down too because what happens to America happens to Canada. So you're not safe in Canada either. So I'm just saying, as always, either move out of the Western world, that's the best scenario. I realize most of you are not going to do that or don't wanna do that. If that's the case, set up your location independent international alpha 2.0 business so that you are very mobile, so that your income is not reliant 100% on the Western world. Those are the two things you can do right now. 
Get used to this. This is coming. Oh, let's talk about when this might be coming. I don't know. <laughs> That's the simple answer. I don't know when this is going to happen. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen next year. Could it happen in five years? Maybe I doubt it. Could it happen in 10? Yeah, it could. It could happen in 10 years. The coronavirus crisis has taken off 10 years off the very limited lifespan of the United States. So if the United States had 20 years left, now it has 10. If it had 30 years left, now it has 20. That's a guess on my part. Um, could it be 20 years before this really happens? Maybe. Now, if it happens in 20 years, you'll start feeling the effects much sooner than 20 years. It's not like everything will be great and then 20 years it'll all go to shit. We're already feeling it now, aren't we? Especially we Americans. Europeans have been feeling this for years, have been feeling their collapse. And if you go to Europe, you'll see it. I talked about it before. Americans are now finally feeling the collapse. So it's not going to be a long time off. It's going to be soon as in historically soon. Five years to 30 years is kind of my wild guess, but I don't know because no one can tell the future. It's not going to happen tomorrow, though. But it's not going to be just fine for 50 years either. Cool? Okay, that's it. Prepare. Get ready. If you want help with preparing for this stuff, you can go to joinsmic.com. That is my mentorship and audio training program. Or you can click here to find out why society is against what you're motivated for. Or you can click here to see whether or not it's a good idea to have kids. See you soon. Bye.